Welcome back to My Block Jazz. I am Denaro Scurry, and we're coming with another loss in Week 6. Jacksonville Jaguars played Detroit Lions 34-16. Uh, we took another L. This makes five in a row, and I'm not going to lie. I said that I wasn't, uh, I wasn't going to none of these games. I wasn't tuning in or watching or going to any of these games with any excitement and uh, any hopes of us winning because we just look so bad. Um, I actually went to this game and there was no, there was no excitement in the stadium. Even though it was only a few, um, what is it, 20% of fans are allowed in the stadium. There was zero excitement. Um, I was in the cabanas and no one was really excited to see the game. Everybody was just kind of there to hang out, drink, and just chill. Um, the game was on and not many people was paying attention. Because uh, the the product on the field is is bad. It just doesn't look good. Um, you have the Jaguars who seems to can't, who seem like they can't do anything right, uh, defensively, offensively, special teams. Seems like nothing can go right. Um, and it's just it's just horrible to watch as a fan, as someone who's been a fan my whole life. It's just horrible to watch. And uh, with what the ownership and with coaching saying, it looks like we have zero help coming this season. Zero help. Zero help at all. Um, but let me get into the game. Uh, Minshew threw 25 times. No, I'm sorry. He threw 44 times. Got 25 uh, receptions for 243 yards. He had one touchdown, one interception, and one fumble. Um, he did not look good. Minshew does not look good. And I came to this conclusion. This was just me thinking. What I believe is they gave their goal was to give Minshew every chance to prove to us that he's the guy. So the whole rumors of should we draft a quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, Fields, Trey Lance, any of these guys coming out, should we put all our bags in the Minshew basket or should we go after another quarterback? And I feel like they're giving Minshew every opportunity. They basically told him, this is your job to lose. We're going to give you every opportunity. We gave you a new offensive coordinator. We're going to give you every opportunity to prove to us that you're the guy. Last year, we won six games behind you. You look like you should have been the rookie of the year. You came in. Everyone was behind you. The mustache. Every, I mean, you had national, um, you had national uh, recognition. And I feel like that's what the Jaguars were looking at. They were like, you could be that guy, so let's stick behind you. And for whatever reason, Minshew just digress. He regress. Is it regress or digress? He doesn't look good. He I mean he looks he looks worse than what he did last year. And I feel like that's um that's what that was the plan going into the season. We're gonna give him every opportunity. Um even that's probably had something to do with the Fournette trade. Uh with Fournette being a strong um a strong personality behind him in the huddle and on the offensive side of the ball. It's like, let's take away that and let's give him a clear mind. Nobody behind him, um, make it, forcing him to do right or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Just trying to trying to make everything as easy as possible for him to, to, for him to succeed. And I feel like Minshew is definitely failing his test. Um, and by him failing, it makes everything look bad. Jay Gruden, he's calling. I think I think Jay Gruden is a good offensive coordinator. Again, every game he has questionable calls. He calls questionable plays, and I, which I don't get. Like every two point conversion we ever had, to me it was a bad play. Every single two point conversion we had was a bad play in my eyes. But um, I still think he's a good he's a good offensive coordinator. But I feel like Minshew's not the guy. He's showing us he's not the guy. And if you look at his stats, his total stats, his total stats, the numbers look good. The numbers look honestly good. If you're just strictly, if you're just strictly a guy, analytic, uh, paper, black and white paper geek who looks at the paper, because it's a lot of it's a lot of these people out there, they look at the numbers. All they do is look at stats and say he's good. And they don't watch film, they don't look at uh, game time situations. They don't look at situational football, so they don't understand why does he throw for 100 yards in the fourth quarter. Well, because they're down 40 points, so that's why he threw 100 yards in the fourth quarter, because they were playing they weren't really playing good defense. They had their second string in there, and the team already had the game in the bag. So that's why he threw for 100 yards in the fourth quarter. The people And when these stats come out, they like, oh, he threw for 300 yards, two touchdowns, he ran for 40-something yards, da-da-da-da. But they don't look at the situation. They don't watch the film. They don't watch the game. And they don't see that a lot of these situational stats are just gimme stats. It's trash stats. And so when you look at Minshew, his numbers are good. 
His QBR is good, but when you watch him play, he's missing people wide open. He's inconsistent. Uh, he missed Chart deep. He missed uh, Cole. He ended up hitting Cole for a nice touchdown, but he's so inconsistent. I'm, I'm sorry, is it a touch was it Cole? No, it wasn't Cole. Um, but he's so inconsistent. Like he he threw he threw a nice pass to Cole down the sideline. Perfect, perfect pass down the sideline, and then he misses Chart deep. He un he underthrew Chark bad. It was a bad underthrown pass, and it got intercepted. So it's like he's so inconsistent. He will make smart plays, and then he'll make a bad play. He'll step up in the pocket when the pocket's collapsing around him, and then make a good play doing that. But sometimes he will run out to the outside, or he'll bail when there's no need to bail. There's nothing, nobody in his face, and he'll bail. And of course, when he gets sacked. Everyone says, oh, that's the offensive line fault. No, it's not the offensive line fault every time he gets set. Sometimes it's Minshew's fault. Sometimes Minshew didn't step up. Sometimes Minshew bailed to the wrong side. Sometimes Minshew held the ball too long. Because I keep seeing people say Minshew hold, or the offensive line isn't blocking well. The offensive line isn't blocking well. That isn't true. They're blocking that. They're actually blocking pretty good. They're blocking better than what they were last year. It's just he keeps holding the ball too long and his inconsistent play in the pocket, his inconsistent throwing, it's, it just makes the whole offense look bad. Um, the game should have been a lot closer than what it was because his inconsistent throwing. I mean, we should have had a lot more first downs and we the score should have been a lot higher, but his throwing was just horrible. His throwing was just bad. And um, I like Minshew. I was the one on the Minshew train set. Let's just put everything behind him and he's proven to us that he's just not that guy. Um, James Robinson. 12 rushes for 29 yards. Uh, the last two teams sucked when it came to run defense. Run defense, Every the last two teams were at the bottom in the league for run defense. And for whatever for whatever reason, Jay Gruden isn't running the ball. Now, again, could this be because they're trying to put all their eggs in Minshew's basket? Saying, Minshew, prove to us that you're the guy. I mean, is this the reason why they traded Fournette? Because they knew we wasn't going to be a run team. Uh, we wasn't going to be heavy on the run, and they knew Fournette wasn't like that with them, uh, with it being his contract year and everything. So they was just like, well, let's just get rid of him and save the money. Because if you have Robinson, he doesn't have no ego. He has nothing. He's an undrafted free agent. So if you say we're gonna, we're not going to run the ball as much, we're, gonna, we're only going to run you 12 to 15 times, and he has no problem with it because he 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 has nothing, no experience. He's, he's just happy to be here. But if you tell Fournette that, of course he's not going to like it. So maybe that could be the reason why they traded for Net because they knew he wasn't going to run the ball heavy. And what are you paying a guy four million dollars a season for if you're not going to run heavy? And the last two games we played uh, teams with a defense, that run defense was in the bottom of the um, the bottom of the league, and there was no stoppage. We, well, they, we didn't not stoppage, but we didn't run the ball. We didn't um, we didn't commit to the run like how we should have. Uh, DJ Chart seven catches. 45 yards. He did what he could do with what we had going on. Keenan Cole, uh, six catches, 143 yards. Keenan Cole stepped up. I think it's Keelan, not Keenan. Keelan Cole stepped up, and um, he's doing this thing. I'm not even going to lie. I've been saying this. I'm shocked how well he's playing. Um, I wouldn't even if we gave if we gave him a contract next year, I would be happy. I honestly, if we let go. Uh, Conley's going to be a free agent. Um, Didi's going to be a free agent. If we sign Cole to another contract next year, I would, I would, uh, I wouldn't be upset about that. I would actually like it. Um, but he's he's doing his thing. He look he's look he's look wonderful. He honestly looks like our number one. He's getting most of the targets, and I think he's our leading receiver. But he looks like the number one. Um, but our offense philosophy, what is it? You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't understand. I don't think we have a real, a real good offense philosophy. Um, we throw. I think they said we throw 66 percent of the time on offense, and if that's what we're going to, then okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? If that, like honestly, if that's what we're going to, if the if they came out and said we're just going to be a pass heavy team, I would I would like that better than for us to just go out there and kind of bullshit around and pity pat with the running and all that. I'd rather for us to just say we're going to look like the or look like um all these other teams that don't have a running game. I was going to say Detroit, but they got a little running game now. But if you look like all these other teams who just who really don't have a running game and historically don't never had a running game, all they do is pass, then that let that would be it. Let that be that. Um our defense. 
does what they do every year. They show up to not show up. They dress up. They dress to not show up. Uh, Matthew Stafford, 19 of 31, 223 yards, one touchdown. He also had an interception. Um, DeAndre Swift, rookie out of Georgia, 14 carries, 116 yards, two touchdowns. And then uh, Galladay, four catches, 105 yards. So our defense um, couldn't stop the run, still couldn't stop the pass. Second, uh, we got a receiver with over 100 yards receiving. Uh, we couldn't stop him. We couldn't stop Galladay from, you know what I'm saying, getting uh, four catches. That's 25 yards per catch. Uh, we couldn't stop him. We did get pressure, but we got no sack. We got one sack, and it was called back, I think, for uh, – Hands to the face or all, all sides, I think it was. Chase Young, I think, jumped off sides, and which uh, erased the sack. So we, we had one sack, and then that got erased. So, again, it's another game with no sacks. No sacks. Uh, Josh Allen didn't play uh, this Sunday. He had a knee injury, and you couldn't even tell because we don't, we don't get sacks. We're a team who don't get sacks. So if Josh Allen don't play, it doesn't make a difference. I mean, he he does he doesn't get pressure to the quarterback. Chase Young honestly looks like a bust. Chase Young looked like we drafted a guy who plays linebacker and said, "Hey, we're gonna put you at defensive end and we're gonna see if we can make something happen." But he's too light in the ass. He needs to be a little bit bigger if he's gonna play defensive end, or just put him at outside linebacker because that's basically what he can do. I remember when he got drafted, he said he can play whatever position. Just put him out there. Well, you can't play in. You can't play end in the NFL because you can't get off blocks. So they, I honestly think we out we we drafted him to play a position similar to how we did Josh Allen. Josh Allen played the outside linebacker in a three four, which he was a blitzing linebacker. They looked at Chase Young to do the same thing, and Chase Young definitely isn't that. Um, and again, I'm gonna say this again: I miss Yannick. I miss Yannick Ngakwe because with him we was always getting pressure, even though he wasn't getting a lot of sacks. We was always getting pressure, and when we had him. He will always take the double team. We'll let Josh Allen come around and get the uh, get the solo sack. So again, we don't have pressure. We have a nose tackle who normally would pay in a three four. We have him at the three technique. It's not making sense with our with our player personnel. So um, we got an offensive. We got an outside linebacker. We got a defensive end. We got a nose tackle plan. The three technique. We got two. Uh, we got another defensive end who can't get off the ball. We have uh, young. We have young rookies. Uh, we have a rookie at corner. We have another young corner who's under as a free agent last year, uh, and Trey Herndon. We have no help in the uh, as far as the safety position. Um, Sidney Jones he started this week, and um, he. Our defense looks so bad to where I can't say if he played well or not. I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty. I can't say if he played well or not because I was at the game and I was lit, but. When I rewatched the uh, game, he didn't pop up on the he didn't pop off the screen for me to say if he did well or not. So our defense is still the same shit. It's still, it's still our defense is still the same. Um, which and then something something strange came out. I guess they asked Doug Marone about Dave or not Dave Caldwell. They asked Doug Marone about Todd Wash, and Doug, uh, Doug said as long as Todd, long as I'm on the team, Todd Wash has a job. That sounds crazy. That sounds crazy. As long as I'm the head coach, Todd Wash has a job. You fired um, uh, Nathaniel Hackett because he was horrible as an offensive coordinator, but you going to die on this hill with Todd Wash and we look horrible? We look fucking horrible and you're going to die on this hill with Todd Wash? That makes no sense, though. So that's strange and all and, and all in one. All that is weird. All that is strange. Um, but like I said, we're, we're not getting – we end up trading for the linebacker – from Tennessee, he wanted out. Um, I don't even know his name. We ended up trading for him, and I was shocked that we did that because we gave up picks. And I thought that's all Jackson was trying to do, which is stack up picks, stack up picks, stack up picks. So I'm surprised that we traded for him. But why would we trade for a linebacker in our division, but we don't trade or try to go get a safety? That makes no sense. Like some of these moves don't make sense. As a GM, Caldwell, what are you doing? As an owner in Shaq Khan, what are you doing? Shaq Khan is. It looks like his goal is to get 100, 100 L's as this owner and still win as the owner of the Jaguars. He's going to get 100 L's, but he's going to get money from the city to do this lot, J. He's still going, you know what I'm saying? So it seems like he does. he's trying to lose to win. Doesn't make sense. I don't think he cares about winning. I don't think Tony Khan cares about winning. Nepotism has him in that building and that nice office, and I think he's just in there chilling, worrying about wrestling. 
So it seems like to me, nobody, as far as ownership, as far as management, as far as head coaching, knows what they're doing. They're just literally going day by day, kicking the tires and see what's next. Um, and it's frustrating. It's frustrating being a, being a fan. It's frustrating me doing videos about the team because I want the team to win. It's frustrating for the, uh, for the fans. When you go to the game, granted there was only 20% of people in the game, in the stadium, but there was zero excitement in the stadium at all. Zero excitement. None of the people I was with was paying attention to the game because we all went to the game just to have a good time. The, literally, the Jaguars went from uh, being a, a, a team for the city to now just being entertainment in the city. Jaguars is, is now looking, they're, to me, they're just like the ABA team, the Giants. They're just like that. They're just entertainment. We're not there. People aren't true fans of the Giants. It's just entertainment, something that you can take the kids to or something you can do on your Sunday afternoon. That's all the Giants. That's all the Jaguars be, are becoming. So that's that. I don't think nothing new is going to happen. It's it's going to be a long season. We just, And I guess as fans, you just have to deal with it, which I think is bullshit. But it is what it is. Um, that's that for this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe and share my videos, man. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my face out. I'm trying to get my opinions out. I want, uh, I want this channel to grow, man. I want, uh, I want, I want to be one of the voices of the people, man. So, uh, subscribe and share my videos, bro. I really appreciate it. Um, but hit me up on Twitter, that boy Scurry, T H A T B O I S C U R R Y. And until then, that's that.